I guess we'll start with what brought you here. Well, I've been a fan of Turner Classic Movies because they, they, they do a great service showing older films. And uh, I went to their first film festival, I guess it was last year. I introduced a few films for them. And I've done the essentials for them once or twice. So I did a whole year of essentials. So I've done a few things for TCM. We sort of, they, they consider me part of the family. I like them. They liked me. They asked me if I'd do this. I said, sure. Well, I think it's interesting because the, the way that the channel operates is almost kind of what you were doing at the start of your career, which is exposing people to underseen films and directors. Yeah, it's true. It's, it, do you think that it, it kind of conveys the sense of the auteur theory? <clears throat> the auteur theory is much misunderstood. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a theory. The French called it La politique des auteurs. It was a political statement. They said the old movies are shit and the new movies are good. Cinema du papa? Cinema du papa is shit. <laughs> but the, the main thing that they were good at was uh, in discovering the personality of various directors who worked at the height of the studio system. So people like Hitchcock and Hawks, who were thought to be just entertainers, were considered to be artists by the French when they saw that they were very personal filmmakers and they brought their personality and their personal obsessions to their work. So it was, it was, it was finding the personal touch in the studio system, which was what they were doing. When you wrote your monographs for, for MoMA, those, those early ones about Hitchcock. Um, Wells, Hawks, Wells, and yeah. Hitchcock. And I guess Lang was later. No, Lang, we, yeah, that was a book. Yeah. Were, were those um, kind of radical in the way that they were all about one author, or was that something that came, like one filmmaker? Or they were radical in the sense that they were the first retrospectives in the United States of all three of those directors. Yeah. Um, Hitchcock was in his 60s, and so was Hawks, and they'd never had a retrospective in the yeah. United States. So it was uh, unusual for that matter. And uh, Wells had never had a f retrospective either. So it was the first of the first of its kind. And it was in New York, so it had an impact. And what was the relationship with Andrew Saris around that time? Well, Andy and I were friends. We hung out in the end of the 50s, early 60s. <coughs> he, and, uh, he and Eugene Archer, who was the third or fourth string critic for the New York Times, um, who was the secret auteur, auteurist, <laughs> secret auteurist. Um, <clears throat> we used to hang out and talk about movies into the wee hours. Yeah. Well, I guess what always interests me is someone who's very deeply passionate about cinema. I wouldn't say a critic, but someone that watched a lot of films. Yeah. Um, when you start making films, and especially when you've made a, a fair amount, do you start to consider your own work in that? Do you have that detached where you can maybe look at Recurrent oh, themes, I or I, I no, I don't do that. Yeah, I try not to. I try to avoid that sort of speculation because I don't. I don't want to be kind of self-conscious. Oh, this is one of my obsessions. Yeah, I, I don't want to. <laughs> well, I was, I was expecting. I purposely that. don't think that way. Yeah, with my own stuff. Well, I, I guess what that leads me to is the thought of how people in receiving your films have often kind of wanted to push a certain type to each one, like. Oh, well, this is a musical in the vein of... Yeah, so the, 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 the standard Bogdanovich review, yeah. like, this is his homage to this. Blank, yeah. This is his homage <laughs> to that. Paper Moon was supposed to be my homage to Shirley Temple. It's the anti-Shirley <laughs> Temple movie. It's absolutely the, 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 the 
contrary of Shirley Temple. So it, anything but Shirley Temple, certainly that wasn't the thing. But they say, you know, that long shot, that's his homage to Ford. Well, Ford was great at long shots, it's true, but he didn't invent it. Yeah. Griffith was pretty good at long shots, too. The idea is that I learned the grammar and vocabulary of movies from looking at a lot of them yeah. and from talking to some of the best directors around. <clears throat> I, I think What's Up Doc was stolen from Bringing Up Baby. It wasn't an homage. We stole the basic plot. I told that to Hawks. I said, I'm stealing, the, stealing some stuff from Bringing Up Baby. He said, that's all right. <laughs> he always used to tell me he'd steal everything. So. So I'm stealing from you. All right, that's fine. So I sent him the script. He called me up. Well, you didn't steal the dinosaur. <laughs> well, I can't steal the dinosaur, Howard. It's too much identified to bring up baby. Yeah, I guess not. Well, you didn't steal the leopard. <laughs> well, I couldn't steal the leopard, Howard. I, mean, that's, uh, I guess not. Well, who have you got in it? Well, Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neill. I mean, I know they're not carrying Grant and Catherine Hepburn. You're damn right they are. <laughs> well. Don't let him be cute. Okay, all right. All right, boy. <laughs> Don't let him be cute. He was very proud of the fact that that picture was a hit. Bringing a Baby wasn't a successful picture in its day. Yeah. I don't know why, but it wasn't. Uh, it, it, it performed well in some markets and not well in other markets. It was very spotty. But, he was, but I told everybody that I had ripped off bringing up baby, so Howard was thrilled that it was a hit because he could take a few bows for it. Yeah. He went down to Rio to, for some kind of tribute and they, he took pictures with his own camera of the marquee of the various theaters that had What's Up Doc was playing. So yeah. It was very sweet of him. Well, it's almost like a running uh, theme with the, the, f the filmmakers you wrote more on or, dis or interviewed more is that there was kind of a lack of reception um, for their great, what would later become, especially their great films. Yeah. Well, that's true, you know. You look at a, a year like 1959, which is, had Rio Bravo, Anatomy of a Murder, North by Northwest, and they gave the award, the Oscar, to Ben-Hur, one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> I wrote a review of Ben-Hur. My review ran like this. The chariot race starts at I listed the starting time of the chariot race. That was my whole review. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very nice. It was, uh, there was a similar reaction to Lawrence of Arabia, I guess, too. I remember reading those review, the review you gave and, and uh, Andrew Sarris gave. Back then, there would be like the kind of designation of fair, good, et cetera. Oh, yes. The, yeah. I didn't like Lawrence of Arabia. First of all, I didn't even know at the time that it was deeply inaccurate. Yeah. I didn't know that. I just didn't like the picture. I thought it was boring and long and boring. And uh, it irritated me. I saw it with a big audience. And that shot of Omar in the distance, the famous shot, big deal <laughs> shot, done, everybody applauded. And I thought if you applaud a shot, you're not in it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and the story, the, the real story, is much more interesting than the movie. Peter O'Toole was great, however. I loved, loved him. I, I've noticed that you, as your films, have you, as you've made more and more films, the kind of, there's always a strong sense of craftsmanship, but it, it's not like an insistent style. It kind of like that shot you say, like takes someone out of it because they notice it's a shot. Is that a, a conscious effort? Well, I'm trying to tell a story, not make a great shot, you know. <clears throat> if, um, I don't think audiences should be aware of technique or what how you do it. It's like taking him backstage in a magic act. It's, it's nobody's business how it's done. You know? um, no, I don't like, I don't like to show off kind of technique. No, I've avoided that as much as possible. Their film is filled with beautiful compositions though, and, and I find people often remark upon Paper Moon or Last Picture Show, but I think especially films like St. Jack or um, Texasville have, have great, great camera work. And I'm wondering what your relationship has been with different cinematographers over the year, like Robbie Mueller or... Well, I, I pretty much call the shot. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll say what I, where I want the camera and usually will indicate the, the lens. Yeah. Once I learned about lenses, which took me a while. Um, 
but I got some very good tips from Orson about lenses and uh, at Hitchcock as well. So I usually say where the camera's going to go, what the camera's going to do, and so on. And then, uh, of course, I leave the lighting up to the camera director of photography. But I mean, I say what kind of mood I want, and he does it. I don't, I don't know about lighting, except that if I don't like it. 